So hello, happy Sunday everyone. Today is September 1st and we're looking at the pollinators out here on the sunflowers. Early morning pollinators were of course bumblebees and then the honeybees are joining them by the end of this video. There are a lot more honeybees about 9 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. They were really hitting the sunflowers and they're going on the sunflower faces that face the rising sun first. No big surprise there because it'll be drier and they're after nectar and just like this little bee here this is a honeybee apis mellifera and she is collecting pollen on her hind legs now you notice that what we're showing here is very slow this is 20 percent of their normal speed why would it do that other than the fact that it just looks cool in video to see them moving slow i want you to see how they're collecting pollen from the sunflowers and how they're getting it to their hind legs. Look at this bee that's flying here to the left. They do this so fast in real time that most people don't realize how they do it. And that's what I'm gonna share in this video. We're gonna talk about some of the benefits of sunflowers that you may not be aware of. We have a lot of different sunflower varieties here. And the honeybees jump sunflower to sunflower so that as long as it's the same species, even though they practice you know floral constancy which means it wouldn't go for example from sunflowers to some kind of milkweed for example they would stay on sunflowers but they do jump between the 10 different species of sunflowers we have here now i want you to see the bee on the right what's it doing the hind legs are specially designed to hold the pollen but the pollen directly from many of the plants that they get it from simply won't stick to their legs and look at the four legs of this bee. She's rubbing them across her mandibles. There is a mandibular gland right above the mandibles, which are on the face of the honeybee. See those forearms? And then she also extends her tongue and strokes her forelegs down the tongue as well. So they're getting glandular material, plus they're getting nectar off of the tongue and then raking that back to the center legs and then ultimately to the hind legs to pack the pollen into the pollen baskets and that's pretty cool but like I said normally you don't see that that's what makes it sticky that's also what makes pollen kind of sweet I don't know if you've ever gathered pollen as it's delivered to the colony but it has not yet become bee bread so when you set up a pollen trap as I've done in other videos and you collect bee pollen that's coming straight from the flowers on its way into the hive it has not become bee bread but it does have a sweetness to it, and that's because they're contributing the nectar that they're gathering here right along with the pollen. How much, how much pollen can a honeybee carry? Well, according to entomology departments that are doing research, up to 35% of the body, we body weight of a worker bee can be pollen. And notice too that it's stuck on the body hairs of the bee, and that's because bees have split ends on their hairs. So when they fly, it generates static. Static causes the dry pollen to cling to it, and then they can groom it around until they pack it onto their pollen baskets. And as I already mentioned, they're adding saliva and glandular material from their mandibular glands to that pollen, and that makes it a little darker than the pollen as it exists on the plant itself. This is just a great opportunity to watch them. This was all video this morning. And I'm also glad that my video camera audio problems have been resolved. So, there's some other things I want to talk to you about. There is a North Carolina State University study ongoing about sunflower pollen specifically. I know everybody wants to plant pollen sources on their property that are the best for the bees. And though sunflower pollen by itself is not a really high protein concentrated pollen. So what benefit is it other than it's abundant? Because I have thousands of sunflowers, the bees are really loading up on this pollen, but is there a secondary benefit? There sure is. There's a study going on that shows that sunflower pollen can protect European honeybees, Apis mellifera, from pathogens such as Nozema serenae. So Nozema, which as most of you may know, is honeybee diarrhea. It's a bacteria that goes on inside the colony. If they collect this pollen, this pollen from sunflowers can actually defeat Nozema, specifically Nozema serenae. 
So that's an interesting side effect that when I was planting all these sunflowers, I was not even aware of. Now that study's ongoing, and uh, you can follow that up. Sunflower pollen's medicinal and protective effects on bees, and you can find out more about that at North Carolina State University. Bees fed a diet of sunflower pollen show dramatically lower rates of infection. That's cool. Here comes a bumblebee right there. The bumblebees, by the way, were flying much earlier when I went out this morning. It was probably 8.30, quarter to 9 in the morning. There weren't a lot of honeybees yet, but the bumblebees were out there. In fact, it's evident that some of the bumblebees spent their night on the sunflower faces. Now, sunflowers are actually, when you're looking at the face of this, it's composed of many different flowers. So the benefit is pretty broad, though because all these pollinators are going to get their proteins from it. They're going to take that back to their colony, and of course that gets turned into bee bread, and that gets fed to developing larvae inside the hive. But the benefit, of course, is to the sunflowers as well, because they're getting pollinated, and then what happens? Wild birds have lots of seed to feed on. So sunflowers are just great all the way around. And again, we're going to just keep showing you the honeybees collecting it because I want you to see the mechanics of them working it back from their face to their middle legs to the hind legs packing it on those brushes on their hind leg pollen baskets. There's another thing we'll show you here coming up and that shows the bumblebee. I want you to see a little of that behavior and I hope you're enjoying just watching them go. I hope you've got pollinators. If you didn't by the way, I bought these sunflower seeds as a seed mix from Eden Brothers. Now look at this sunflower. The same bees again will go to different varieties of sunflowers. I noticed that they like the darker sunflowers earlier in the morning. And this bumblebee, characteristic of a lot of bumblebees that I've found recently, I think he's overeaten on nectar. He's loaded with pollen on his hind legs, or hers I should say, sorry. And notice how she extends that middle leg there. There are some viral photos that go around on social media. Somebody sticks their finger down and it looks like the bumblebee gives them a high five by extending that foot. What it's really doing is trying to fend you off. This bee is like a Thanksgiving honeybee that's overeaten and can't fly yet. So whenever these honeybees, which are to the left, when they get close to it, it just sticks its little foot up that's covered in pollen and tries to fend them off and tell them to keep away. So if you want to get a high five from a bumblebee, and you find one that's overeaten like this and is kind of stagnant on the face of a pollen source, you can stick your finger down there and it'll touch your finger and it'll look like it gave you a high five for those of you who like to attach human emotion to insects. So the bumblebees, as I said, sometimes I've collected bumblebees and they're unable to fly. They go right to the ground and they need a couple hours to digest or use up some of what they've gathered or maybe they're just exhausted but they can't fly yet. And that's interesting. I think they just overeat. It's covered in pollen. And of course the upper honeybee there does not have a lot of pollen on its hind legs yet. That's because its foraging day has just begun. The other thing is how many of the foragers out of the beehive are generally out for pollen? Well, 15 to 30 percent of the foraging force in a beehive are out collecting pollen. They really don't like to long-term store it. So they like to bring in fresh pollen as I've talked about before, the pollen goes through a fermentation process inside the beehive and once it's worked up and about 24 hours to 48 hours uh, you get a really strong scent off of it. So then it becomes used for bee bread for the developing larvae and then you get a stronger colony and thanks to this pathogen study we know that there are other benefits to sunflowers. Hope you got something out of it Thanks for watching and enjoy your honeybees.